Good evening. Welcome to Liberty and Justice for All. Uh, tonight we have another presentation for you of actually information that it doesn't get printed where it should be printed. Information that you should have, what you do with it, it's what you do with it. We really don't care. Uh, but you should have all the information available. Now, first of all, there have been many people accuse us of, have, of doing this show and picking on somebody or some group or something that we don't like. Well, there isn't anything I don't like, actually, except dishonesty or uh, manipulation. So we present any information we get not to pick on any group, not to pick on any people, not to do anything except present the other side that you don't seem to get. Now what happens, and this is a training that I found uh, by the, probably the media, that when you're confronted with something, you pick any part of it out and say, I don't like that part of it, therefore I'm not going to listen to the rest of it. If you run across this situation tonight, and tonight we're going to be talking about different religious groups, if you happen to belong to one of them and say, well, I'm not going to listen to the rest of it because I don't like this part, you're doing yourself a great disservice because the rest of it might apply to you and you might learn to understand. Now, we're not going to pick on Catholics tonight. If we were going to pick on somebody, I'd probably pick on Mormons. But what for? It doesn't matter. We're not picking on anybody. And so understand that if there's one part you don't like, don't dismiss the rest of it. And if there's one part you don't like, call myself or my guest, Eric Phelps, and let's discuss it. And if we're wrong, call us and let's discuss it. And especially if you're in a pos position of authority, quote unquote, We'd love to have you come down and hear your side of it. We've been trying for this for a long time. Nobody seems to want to respond. They just say, well, that's no good what they're saying, and it's not true. Well, come on down and tell us why. Anyway, Eric John Phelps, I've been associated with for a year now. He's my guest. His book is going to be out in uh, bound and printed the middle of July. The book is called Vatican Assassins. Sounds pretty like a pretty deep subject. Anyway, Eric, it's a pleasure to have you here. Nice to be with you. Uh, I'm glad your book's getting out. Um, I've read your manuscript, and while I can say that uh, it didn't exactly frighten me, it was a total different angle, I suppose, on who's running the show. So you've done extensive research, and are you getting any uh, real negative feedback on what you're saying? First of all, I'm, I want to make it perfectly clear, and I will vouch for Eric, because I have looked at the documents. What Eric writes in his book isn't theory. What Eric writes in his book is history. And if you get his book, whether you like this or not, you get his book you're presented with, I understand, close to 7,000 pages of documentation 5, and, and older books. 5,000. Right? 5,000. Huh? 5,000. 5, okay. I exaggerated. 5,000 pages of information with, this, with the book itself and with the CD-ROM that comes with it. It's absolutely fascinating. And my main question is, what the hell ever possessed you to do something like this? <laughs> Uh, well, I first uh, embarked upon the subject due to a, um, a damage with regard to using the King James Bible. Uh, people were using other versions, and I didn't think that was a problem until I discovered that the underlying Greek text and uh, Hebrew text were different for all the new versions versus the King James Bible, which led me to research the Westcott and Hort Revision Committee from 1870s to the mid-1880s and how they brought in a Greek text that was different than the Texas Receptus in over 5,000 places, which then led me to who would do this kind of thing. The next um, issue was the Lincoln assassination. When I read Burke McCarty's The Suppressed Truth About the Assassination of Abraham Lincoln, published in 1924, and how it very succinctly 
uh, described the Jesuits as the assassins of President Lincoln, especially their control of John Surratt, who escaped to Alexandria, Egypt, and enlisted in the Pope's Wav Army, and then was brought back here for trial in 1867. The other issue was the assassination of President Kennedy, which uh, grieved me very much when I, was when I was in the fourth grade, and I thought from then on I would find out who did it. So off and on through the years, I did uh, research and then ultimately find who did it, who did it, and why they did it. Now, the, the Jesuit order, most people have heard of it, but they don't really know what this is. What, what is it? The Jesuit order was started in 1540 by Ignatius Loyola, who was a Spanish nobleman, and it was uh, started to be a military order for the purpose of destroying the Protestant Reformation and uh, bringing back the Pope's Dark Ages, when the Pope ruled the world as the king of the world, particularly all throughout Europe, when all the kings were subject to the Pope. And uh, <clears throat> so that's the starting of the Jesuit order, and it is a militia, it is a military order, it is not simply a religious order. And their purpose was to, uh, in their counter-reformation with their Council of Trent, to destroy the Reformation and bring back the Dark Ages. I'm told by our local media and or local sheriff's department and or local district attorney's department that militia is a dirty word. <laughs> well, Ignatius called it his militia. It's been called the light horse of the Pope. It's called the Corps. It's similar to the Marine Corps. In fact, the Marine Corps is patterned after the Jesuit order. Um, no, it is a military order. It's an army. And Napoleon Bonaparte in his memoirs when he was at St. Helena uh, described it as an army when uh, General Montalon wrote his memoirs. So they have passed down these orders and they still exist today, is that? The Jesuit order still exists today. It's bigger than ever and more powerful than ever. And it is um, the Jesuits learn absolute and complete and total obedience to their superior. Their superior is the voice of God, and whatever the superior tells them to do, that's what they must do. Mm -hmm. But they don't know for sure that this is God speaking. That's what they're trained to believe. That's and after you go through their spiritual exercises and you're drilled enough, that's what you believe. They're cut away from all their family ties. They're cut away from father and mother, brother, sister. Their family is the order. So this is, is this, does this relate to brainwashing? Sure. It's uh, every 30 days out of the year, the Jesuits have to go to their spiritual exercises and their retreats in various places, and they're, they refocus on what their goal is, and their goal is world government under the Pope of their making, ruling the world from Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. That's their goal. World government. This, we hear this a lot, and we have all kinds of things coming at us in different ways. Um, in order to rule the world, as I understand, and, and it makes sense to me, you control the food, you control the, the health, and you control the money. If you can control those three things, you can control the world. And all organized religion. Right. Islam, everything. Everything. So the Jesuits are basically controlling or involved in all organized religion? All centralized organized religion, yes. Anything that has a central governing body, from the Southern Baptists to the Episcopalians to the Presbyterians to the Lutherans, any kind of governing body that's centralized, they will ultimately control through high-level Scottish Rite Freemasonry, which the Jesuits authored. Okay, so if you're controlling the organized religion, how would you control the money supply? You control the central bank, just like they did in the reductions in Paraguay. You have a central bank, you control the bank, and everything that proceeds from the bank, especially the credit that it extends, you will then determine what that credit will be spent on. And here it's the military industrial complex. Right. So the Federal Reserve Bank was created and thus it created the military complex. Ah, the Federal Reserve, one of my favorites. So the Federal Reserve